So happy midweek. It's time. It's Wednesday night. It is good to be back with you. This is going to be our, in God's grace, um, our final time together in our book, Enjoying Intimacy with God, J. Oswald Sanders. We're going to cover the last two chapters, chapter 15 and chapter 16 together tonight. This is good stuff. Have you found yourself being discouraged? Have you found yourself struggling with at least some form of occasional temporary depression, if not more significant depression? Have you struggled with things like anxiety? If you haven't, you would be unique in this culture. This culture has ways of bringing about discouragement and even I would go as far as depression, right? If you're watching the news, click, 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 or on Twitter all day, you probably will be discouraged, depressed, right? Now, the reality is it's not just on the news, it's not just on Twitter, it's not just over there that these issues are coming. It is right where you and I live, right? It is in our city, but it is even in our church, even in our homes. This is a real issue for us. Discouragement and depression is a real issue for us. Today, we are going to look at chapter 15 entitled, Intimacy Prevents Discouragement. I've been wrestling with this today. I was driving on the other side of town, had a lunch, was processing some of this in my mind, and I thought that here's the truth. I don't know if it sounds good or not good, but here's the truth. The more intimate I am with the Lord, the closer I am to the Lord, the less I care about what people think of me. I just, I'm getting to this place where I have such a growing and deepening relationship with the Lord that truth is, I really don't care how you view me or judge me. That means I'm not all that concerned with what I put on Facebook or Twitter, social media. Um, I'm just not that concerned, right? All those things can lead, if I pay too much attention to those, to discouragement. So that's what we're tackling today. Uh, the fact is that the closer we are to the Lord, the least likely we are to let this affect us, at least long term. Now, some of you would say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. It seems as if Paul went through much hardship. It seems as if, if you start looking at Scripture, that Paul struggled. If you look at just simply chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, he says and writes this to the church. As God's ministers, we commend ourselves in everything by great endurance, by afflictions. He's saying we've, we've had them. By hardships, by difficulties, you know, like those are all pretty similar. Paul's making a point here. By beatings, here's what he's went through. Beatings, imprisonments, by riots, he's caused riots. By labors, by sleepless nights, by times of hunger, by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by kindness. Some of these things good, many of these things bad. Think of Paul's life here. He was shipwrecked, he was snake bit, he was arrested, he was beaten, he was tortured, he was stoned and left for dead. Listen to me. Paul's life was a life of hardship and one of difficulty. So how is it that we can say that intimacy with God, because he had it, prevents discouragement. Wasn't Paul discouraged? Certainly there were occasions where he says very clearly and emphatically that he himself was discouraged. That is for sure. But that's not the end of the story. That's not the only thing 
that he writes or that he says. He writes this in verse 1 of chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. He says, Therefore, since we have this ministry because we were shown mercy, he's talking about his ministry, the ministry of reconciliation to God, the, the ministry of the gospel to the Gentiles, we do not give up. We do not give up. He says, by an open display of the truth. We live our lives as open display of the truth. Paul says throughout his writings that we should take heart. He says that we should be courageous and strong. He says things that to us would not make sense in his circumstance. He talks about overcoming and having victory over discouragement and even depression. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 11, he talks about being content in all circumstances. He says that he has learned that. He listed out his circumstances, whether with much or with very little whether in circumstances that were good or circumstances that were bad, he learned. He learned to endure. The closer we walk with the Lord, the more we will endure. Is there anything that we can pick up here in 2 Corinthians to help us do that? Is there anything in here that would help us to not lose heart as we live out the gospel. I think the first and most obvious thing is this ministry of reconciliation. He says here in verse 1 that we were shown mercy, we do not give up. Instead, we renounce secret and shameful things, not acting deceitfully or distorting the word of God, but committing ourselves before God to everyone's conscience by open display of the truth. But if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing in their case that God of this age has blinded their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let's let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the very face of Jesus Christ. So, how does intimacy overcome discouragement? How does that happen? Number one, realizing that we have been entrusted with a ministry. I think that Paul here could have been extremely discouraged and depressed debilitatingly so, had he not realized, as he said in this passage, he had a ministry. There was something greater than himself entrusted to him, some bit of news, the gospel, that Jesus had died for their sins, been buried and raised again from the dead, and offered them the gift of eternal life, the free gift of eternal life. That's what motivated him. That's what drove Paul. That's what allowed him to overcome any type of discouragement that would come his way. That's what made him pop out of bed in the morning, brush his teeth, and get to the office so he could share the gospel. He knew that this message was an eternal message, a message of reconciliation that meant people's sins would be forgiven, would be dealt with, and they could live a life in the presence of God through the power of His Holy Spirit, through the work of Jesus. I'm afraid we've lost the, the wonder and the beauty, the majesty of the gospel itself. Is it possible? Does the, the very gospel keep you from being discouraged when you see things, hear things that are obviously discouraging things? Do you see the opportunity to make much of Jesus? Do you see that you can share the gospel with a lost and dying, desperate world? I hope that we see that. The second thing I see here 
is that he, being Paul, was endowed with a new strength. He'll say in, in the 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 here, he'll say, um, Outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. There was a lot coming upon him. His body, because of being beat, stoned. I believe Paul's face, once stoned in their day, did not have the doctors to... Um, you know, surgeons to do that. They probably did the best they could to reset his face. Maybe even Dr. Luke, who knows, did the best they could after stoning to reset the bones in his body, some of those things. But those would have grown back and in part at least disfigured. He probably didn't look uh, pretty, right? He probably struggled with some pain, from those injuries. He's received beatings, lashings, many of them. His back was probably laid open, and as the the skin, the flesh grew back, it would have been just scars all over him. When he says outwardly we are wasting away, he knows what it's like to have sleepless nights. He knows what it's like to not have food, to be starving. He knows what it's like to to feel abandoned by all of his partners and his friends. He knows that. How then is it that he survives that? How is it that he can fight discouragement and depression in the midst of that? Well, he says we're being renewed daily. What does that look like? It's a different language, but what that says is in a very real way, he was intimate intimate with God. He grew in his intimacy daily. That's exactly what he's talking about. Imagine being in his circumstance without intimacy with God, without recognizing that the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. That's the next point. He was endowed with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. How did he overcome this discouragement the same way that you and I will overcome our discouragement as we walk in this world, as we deal with the sin and the pain of this world? We have one who is called the Comforter in Scripture. He is the gift for us. He is the Holy Spirit in all believers, those who follow and trust Jesus, those are Christians. Have him in them. What a gift the Holy Spirit is. He is to you and to me. How can we walk with him daily, regularly, growing in intimacy with him and be discouraged or be worse, depressed? It's virtually impossible. The more we press into him, The more intimacy we have, the less we care about what's going on in this world. The less we take that to heart, the less we have sleepless nights, the truth be told, the more we walk with Him, the more we know Him, the less we care what others think of us. He was encouraged by the assurance of the harvest. I've been praying this prayer every day from Luke chapter 10, verse 2. And I have, as I wake up and as I get in my quiet time daily, I read those verses. I've memorized them. I I oftentimes just quote them. And I begin to pray that God would remind me again. Remind me again. I would confess, Lord, I believe it today that the harvest truly is abundant. That's what he's talking about here. If you believe that the harvest is abundant, that the workers are few, and you volunteer to be a worker, it is very difficult to be discouraged when you're out beating the bushes and people are coming to Christ. It's very hard to be discouraged and depressed when you see God actively at work in people's lives. And so do you believe that the harvest is abundant? Do you believe that God is still at work, calling people to Himself, drawing people to Himself. I do. 
I renew that thought, that prayer, that commitment, that belief every single morning. As we end chapter 16, the very last chapter, this will be our last session together. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. There's one more after that. Chapter 16 talks about the intimacy begetting uh, really freedom, liberty, right? And again, what this means in practice is that when we are intimate with God, or our intimacy, we have intimacy with God, when that's the case and it's growing and it's real and it's vibrant, that's the best freedom there is. What does freedom look like? Well, people who are forgiven of sin, people who are being renewed daily, they don't have guilt and shame. They have freedom. They have peace. I will say again to end our time together, the closer that I am with God, the less I'm concerned with what other people think. That's freedom. That's contentment. So, the same is real for you. The more intimate you are with God, the less you will care about what other people think. That's freedom. Are you experiencing that type of freedom? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for that type of freedom that only comes, truly can only come through intimacy with you. I thank you that you're allowing me to grow in that intimacy with you. I pray that that would continue for the rest of my life. I thank you that Jesus has come to this earth. He's dealt with my sin, Lord. I have no guilt, no shame. It was all placed upon him. He took that. He went to the cross. I have no wrath uh, of, of your wrath against me no longer, Father. It was placed upon Jesus as my substitute. And when he was taken off of that cross, he was placed in a tomb. And three days later, he was risen from the dead, seen. It was written down. It was communicated to me. And I just stop and I recognize and I say thank you. What freedom has come for me and for others who recognize that in Christ we are forgiven. We are more than conquerors. We are your, ch your children, your sons, your daughters, and even, according to Scripture, your friends. I thank you for that. I pray that you would help us to, to care more about what you think of us, how you see us, than this world around us, Father. Help us to press into you, Father. That's my prayer tonight. I love you. I thank you for the chance to share with your people. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me.